Hey guys, what's up? It's Discount Keanu Reeves here, and today we got the top 30 meta snapshot for update 5.1, just in time to take stock of everything prior to Spider-Man and Mysterio and whoever else is coming around the corner to actually impact things. So, these kinds of snapshots are really impossible to do right after an update, and while I dislike doing them right before an update, it makes a lot more sense, because now the dust has settled, we've had multiple weeks to play with and against Jean Grey's and the other characters from the update, who may or may not be on this list at all, sorry to Storm, uh, Iceman, and Jubilee, but we, we know now where these characters land, and it's easier for me to more accurately um, peg where these characters land on a top 30 snapshot or if they're not here at all. So just to remind you guys, as always, uh, the characters that are bolded are characters that have moved or that appear for the first time on this list. So prior to this update, prior to 5.1, Jean Grey wasn't even on the radar for the top 30 PvE snapshot. She couldn't do GBR, she couldn't do ABX, her shadow line was just whatever, and her world boss was pretty pathetic. It was like in the 30s or 40s, um, even with a crazy high raid level and super OP strikers and supports. Um, but now that has obviously changed. Um, pretty much outside of Jean Grey and Bishop, there are no other additions that were not here before. Every other bolded character is bolded because they've moved somewhere on the list, but they were already there to begin with. And sorry again to Storm, Iceman, and Jubilee, but they're just not strong enough in either PvP or PvE to actually crack the top 30, which is kind of sad. And I don't think we've had, and now that I think about it, I don't think we've had an update this year that's been this bad in terms of the power level between the strongest and the weakest. Now, of course, it's going to be impossible for Storm, Iceman, and Jubilee, and even possibly Psylocke, to compete with Jean Grey. Actually, Psylocke is the only other character besides Jean that actually moved up on both the PvE and PvP lists. But if you think about all the other updates before this one, you know, Endgame thought, saw the revival of Captain America and Thor, obviously the revival of Thanos and a, a whole bunch of other characters. Even before that, Wolverine Tier 3, he had his time in the, in the PvP meta uh, very close to the top for at least a month. Sabretooth and Juggernaut are decent PvE characters. Um, and then before that, of course, Captain Marvel, she went from zero to the top of both lists. Minerva's amazing for PvE. Nick Fury's great for PvE as well. And then even go back the, for the first update of this year, Fantastic Four. I mean, of course, Mr. Fantastic and Doctor Doom are all over both of these lists. And even Invisible Woman and Human Torch make their uh, presence known and uh, victorious. The only character from Mr. Fantastic update, from the Fantastic Four update, that isn't here is Thing. So yeah, this is the first update that really has not... Um, despite the massive uh, um, impact of Jean Grey as a, as a singular character, the rest of this update has felt very shallow in terms of its snapshot uh, impact. And I think that's why a lot of people have felt like this update is taking a really long time to get through and that it seems as though Far From Home is, is really far away, pun intended, because uh, all these other characters, you know, in particular the two new characters, Iceman and Jubilee, almost Bishop, and then also Storm, yeah, they all, I mean, Storm got better, that's great, but just not good enough, just nowhere near good enough um, to be considered among the top characters, and so they just kind of forget about them, you forget about them, I forget about them, a week later, and then still another three or four weeks for the update. But let's take stock of what has changed. We have the um, uh, legend up here, World Boss Ultimate is the Mountain, ABX, GBR, Shadowland Plus, um, this is a, a little bit inconsistent with how I apply it, but whatever. Timeline Battle, AC and AT. Before we get into the exact specifics, I just want to remind everybody watching, this is my own personal list. This is not a list that I collaborate on with thousands of players. I don't take votes, I don't take polls, um, I don't mind read people. So if you disagree with me, that's totally fine. If you think other characters are more valuable, if you think characters from within here are less or more valuable, that's also great. I encourage disagreement, I encourage conversation. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. These are just my opinions and hopefully it can shed some light on the game for you and maybe help you think about characters in a different way and value them slightly differently or not. So, on the PvE side of things, I think the top five pretty much remains intact. I don't really see this update changing that because while Jean Grey is extremely powerful, um, you could argue that she's better than Captain America, but I think that's where it stops. I don't think she's going to be as flexible as Captain Marvel, um, and she doesn't have the application for ABX, so she loses points there. I did give her the ABX icon, but she's only available for one day, so keep that in mind. Cap is available for two or three days, for three days. 
Captain Marvel's available for like four days. Deadpool is not available, but he's just way too dominant everywhere else. And then, of course, Luna Snow and Sharon Rogers. So that's kind of the way things shake out there for Jean Grey. But, you know, she goes from not even being in the top 30 to being number six. So that's a big fucking deal. That's a huge jump. She pole vaulted over every other character here, which is insane. Going along down the list, I made a few changes. I dropped Cable down a few spots because I think his value um, as kind of the easiest character to play and just kind of simple combo is really just not cutting it anymore. And his damage is starting to, um, you know, just appear less good. And, you know, single target damage, it just doesn't have as much of a punch as some of these other characters like Jean Grey and like some of these other uh, level 70s and tier 3s. Obviously, it's, it is in a way unfair to compare him to tier 3s, but that's just the nature of a meta snapshot without meta skills like uh, all defense down and without the help of strikers cables damage you know is really hurt on top of that iron man is creeping up now i also moved iron man up i think he was around the 25 range i bounced him way up um it's my fault for not having him here in the first place i didn't take enough time to search and to scour youtube for more content about iron man tier 3 I knew that Iron Man Tier 3 could do ABX with a CTP of Rage in the 30, uh, in the, sorry, in the 3 million to 3.5 million range, which is obviously much better than Cable, and that does make Iron Man the best Blast male hero for ABX, and I guess it makes him the best Blast, uh, ma yeah, Blast male, not better than Blast females. Anyways, um, but I didn't have other content, but I was able to find some videos that were actually posted about a month ago, so I should have put this in the last snapshot, um, but yeah, videos showing Iron Man doing GBR, videos showing Iron Man doing uh, World Boss Ultimate, and he looks to be as good, if not better, than Cable. So because of that, you kind of have to put him around the same place as Cable, if not possibly higher. And that would actually mean moving Cable down one and moving Iron Man up one. So I think these two could kind of flip-flop. You could put them either way. Um, Iron Man might be a little bit more consistent, or sorry, Cable might be a little bit faster and more consistent for you in GBR, but I think that might be the only game mode where Iron Man is not stronger than Cable, unless you're talking like, you know, very specific situations or if you don't have the right um, setup for Iron Man. Psylocke I also moved way up to number 16 because her damage output is just disgusting uh, in World Boss Ultimate and she just completely shreds everything. Everybody else because of that had to move down one but I'm not going to bold them because it's not that they're getting worse, it's just that other people are getting better. I also moved Thor up and Sabretooth and Wolverine down a little bit. Um, now with an alt with you know with absolute highest PVE output build, I do think Sabretooth is a little bit better than or sorry Wolverine is a little bit better than Sabretooth um, overall for PVE, but uh, Sabretooth does have the advantage of being a villain and uh, Wolverine you know the the difference between his his maximum PVE build. Um, and, and what he can do, like let's say stage 55 of World Boss, and then what you can do with a PvP build, which is like stage 50, is so small. He just doesn't have a very large ceiling when it comes to PvE, so it feels wrong to put him just one point ahead of Sabretooth just to make a personal point, whereas Sabretooth is actually, you know, in most cases with most builds, as good if not better than Wolverine, and he's only level 70, um, and then he's also got the villain tag. The rest of PvE, honestly, really much, really pretty much shakes out the same way. There aren't any huge waves. The majority of waves have happened, have occurred in PvP. So that's what we're going to talk about for the rest of the time here. Now, of course, Jean Grey, I mean, I'm pretty confident putting her at number one. Some people might disagree with me. They might put Thanos number one, okay? Some people might disagree with that, and they might disagree with me, and they might say, you know what? Captain Marvel's never banned from timeline battle. She should be number one. I honestly think Jean Grey is the best. She's the she's one of the most difficult characters in the game to kill. Not only is that a problem, but you have to kill her twice. And then she has guard break immunity penetration. She has guard break penetration, which even shouldn't even exist in the game. Uh, but she basically just has uh, sort of skills where if you don't dodge them or they don't miss you, you're going to die because you're going to get guard broken. You're going to get locked at the place, and she's going to just going to combo the shit out of you and and murder you. And no other character basically has that, and no other character administers that, you know, like, attacks that way as consistently as Jean Grey. You play her on auto, she does five, she does three, she does five again. It's an absolute nightmare, and I think, undis you know, undisputed, uh, absolutely the most deserving number one PvP character in the game. Now, because Jean Grey has created such a monumental shift in PvP, completely dominating everyone who's not Thanos or Captain Marvel, um, it has created a space for characters to try to counter her. So I've seen a huge uptick in the number of teams that use Strife recently. Whoops, 
That's why I bolded Strife. I didn't actually move him up or down on the list, but I've seen a lot more Strifes. I've also seen a lot more Deadpools. But I've also seen a lot more Ant-Mans, and that's why Ant-Man is taking a huge jump, not because I like him, but because I've seen like so many top tier PvP teams using him, and with some effectiveness. So he went from like the, the bottom to mid-20s, mid all the way up to number 7, and I think this is warranted, because he can uh, kill Jean Grey, possibly consistently, I'm not really done uh, experimenting yet, but the fact that I'm using him, and the fact that so many other people are using him, and, then, and there is effectiveness in it, um, specifically against Jean Grey now, um, is reason to, you know, put some respect on Ant-Man's name. Is he going to last up here? I don't know. Is Spider-Man going to join Ant-Man near, near the top as a counter to Jean Grey? Possibly. But you get into this rock, paper, scissors uh, thing where Ant-Man is, is presumably good against Jean Grey, but then uh, Jean Grey is good against Captain Marvel, and then Captain Marvel is good against Ant-Man. So it's an interesting kind of interplay between those three, not necessarily those three specifically, but those three in addition to, you know, substituting Ant-Man for someone like Quicksilver, substituting Quicksilver for someone like Deadpool, and so on and so forth. Characters that rely heavily on iframes to take down Jean Grey will be extremely heavily punished by Captain Marvel who can just pop her forth and nuke you down, especially as a speed type, you have low base stats, you can't tank her damage the way that a universal type or the way that a combat type should be able to. Um, Victorious as well, I mean Quicksilver is the same basic spiel as Ant-Man, except he's not as good as Ant-Man because he doesn't have tier 3, so his base stats are lower, and he has fewer iframes to hide in, whereas Ant-Man has 5 and 4, these really long iframes, and he's got, of course, the infamous 87% guaranteed dodge, so that does play a factor into it, although Quicksilver is still very good. I'm not saying he's bad, he's one point down from Ant-Man. And I've seen a lot of Victorious mainly to buff up Jean Grey and Captain Marvel's HP. You can also use her as a leadership if you're not going to use the debuff, but I'm just seeing tons of teams with that 30% flat HP bonus to try to get a small edge against other teams that would otherwise be identical. Um, because of the, you know, overpower overpowering strength of Jean Grey, I've also seen a lot of teams complete, completely move away from Wasp. So not only because they're using Jean Grey's leadership, but also because they'll just use um, Dr. Doom's leadership or Strife's leadership, but because they need three heavy hitters and they can't afford to hide a character like Wasp on the team because it's absolutely possible that their first two characters will get wiped out over the course of a fight against a, against an enemy that's using Jean Grey, you know, Captain Marvel, and someone else. So because other teams stopped using stopped using Wasp and had three heavy hitters, basically four because you have to kill Jean Grey twice, you now have other teams responding in kind, which basically, you know, uh, exponentially reduces Wasp's overall value. She's still there, she's still used, but just not as much as she once was because once everyone else dies and it's just Wasp, you lost, it's over. She's not gonna kill anyone. She's certainly not killing Jean Grey or Thanos. She might kill a poorly built Captain Marvel, but that's pretty much it. She might kill Strife, but she's never gonna kill Deadpool or Doctor Doom. She probably won't kill Ant-Man before he kills her. Same thing for Quicksilver and so on down the list. Um, I also moved up Psylocke a bit, and I also moved up uh, Winter Soldier, Thor, and Bishop ahead of some of these other guys, Colossus, Blue Marvel, these, these AC-only characters. Bishop, this is kind of a personal statement here. I do think he's better than these characters, specifically for Timeline Battle, and I don't play enough Alliance Conquest to know if he's good for Alliance Conquest, but he might be. He's got long iframes with priori priority, but I do think that his showing against Captain Marvel is enough respect and is enough of, a, of proof uh, to put him on this list and to put him somewhere here in like the top 20 or the sorry the bottom 10 uh, near the top 20 among these other characters so this is the top 30 meta snapshot for update 5.1 just before spider-man far from home we're gonna have to wait and see what happens what is shaken up by spidey mysterio and the other characters slash uniforms to come but in the meantime let me know what you think of this list subscribe if you enjoy the content and you want to support me and of course if you like what you see i hope to see you later today Take care.